Welcome back, everyone. Let's look at a very unique action movie. Bunraku was a movie I discovered a few years ago. I was drawn in by the distinct way the movie looked in general. The dark but colorful scenery of the movie is really beautiful in my opinion, and it really reminded me of one of my childhood favorites, Dick Tracy. Just looking at the comparison of the movies really brings me back to my childhood, and I think it's really beautiful to look at and does pay good homage to the movie Dick Tracy. To go along with the ominous view of the scenery and dark tones, the movie actually has an even deeper meaning. Bunraku is actually derived from a 400 year form of Japanese puppet theater, and the director uses this throughout the movie in terms of transitions or even storytelling. In the beginning of the movie, there's actually a whole puppeteer show done to explain how man went from swords to nuclear weapons, then due to the destruction of nuclear weapons, went right back to sword. And this part is actually really cool and excellently done. Boraku well, has an all-star cast, starring Josh Hartnett, Woody Harrelson, Japanese musician Gak, also with Kevin McKidd, Ron Perlman as a main antagonist, and Demi Moore. It also includes a narrator that tells a story throughout the movie. This narrator is actually portrayed by Mike Patton of Faith No More fame. Mike Patton's tone of his narration sets a great mood in the movie and goes along with the tone the director Guy Emoji was trying to set. As we know, Mike Patton is a great storyteller in his music, but he does an even better job in this movie and I really, really enjoyed the way he narrated us from the beginning to the end of the movie and it kept the movie flowing, in my opinion, very well. And also he made some references to some songs he sang. So while you're watching the movie, look out for those. The first drop of blood changes everything. Carrying an undeniable intention, it is always a painful reminder that a violent solution can never be realized without putting one's life at stake. The story of Baraku draws heavily on samurai and western films influence. It is based in an apocalyptic world where due to the destruction that guns and missiles have caused, guns are outlawed and now we are back to the way of the sword. The land is controlled by gangs and the biggest gang is led by Nicola, the woodcutter, played by Ron Perlman. The way gangs decide power is they have challenges among each other, usually a 20 versus 20 man fight but Nicola has 10 killers counting him that are very deadly and uses one killer versus 20 men. Usually he would send his top lieutenants such as killer number two, played by Kevin McKidd. Suddenly, two mysterious figures show up. One, the mysterious drifter, played by Josh Hartnett, who is looking for revenge for whoever killed his father. And the samurai, named Yoshi, played by Gok. Yoshi is there to retrieve a family heirloom that was stolen from his village as a request from his dying father. Yoshi also wants to master the stages of a samurai. In this particular stage, he's trying to master Jin, the most difficult stage of samurai. In town, Yoshi meets up with his uncle and cousin who own a fish restaurant where they're attacked by the Red Army. Yoshi defends them and in particular gets a big target on himself. Eventually, the two paths cross. They are then recruited by a follower of the general, the bartender played by Woody Harrelson, who is a member of the resistance trying to fight off the Red Army. The resistance is usually made up of farmers and other people just tired of the Red Army running the town. And this is the arc of the story as the two mysterious strangers fight Nicola's army and eventually try to fight Nicola himself, the woodcutter, in the end. Now, as I mentioned before, this movie drew a lot on samurai and Western influence in films. So while I was watching, I couldn't help myself but think of his full dollars with Clint Eastwood when he protected the town from bandits or a wandering samurai movie where the samurai would help the villagers from bandits or crooks. This is the kind of movie that this is. Now, it's not going to be the greatest movie you'll watch as it does have some cheesy dialogue in it. But it's very well done and the actors do a great job. So it's not going to win any Oscars, but it's very entertaining. So in conclusion, if you're looking for something that you want to see that you haven't seen before that has great style and great visuals, I would recommend Buraku. Like I said, you're not going to get an Oscar winning movie, but you're going to get a very entertaining movie. And I think sometimes those are the best ones to see. If you want to pick up a copy, you can go to the Amazon video or you can even go and get it from eBay. I actually picked this up for $5 at a rental store. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. 
and please enjoy the rest of your day.